Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we're doing a five channel amplifier in this 2020 Toyota RAV4. In this install, we're going to show you how to mount this amplifier under the passenger front seat and get it wired to the factory radio. Let's get started. Now as we get started, one thing to quickly note before we dive into things, this model RAV4 is not equipped with the factory upgraded JBL sound system. If you have the JBL sound system, keep in mind that your install may differ ever so slightly. Let's jump on in. Now here we are underneath the hood. We've located the battery on the driver's side here. Underneath this cover, this is the positive post that we're gonna power our amplifier. So we're gonna run wire from that positive post through an inline fuse through the firewall through a grommet here on the passenger side to the passenger front seat area. All right, so here we are at the passenger front seat area. Um, we're gonna go ahead and plan on mounting our amplifier underneath the seat just to provide it a little bit more protection, but somewhat accessible in case we have to perform any service on it and mount it on a piece of ABS plastic just so we can ensure it's nice and secure. Now the seat itself is mounted with four T50 Torx bolts. Go ahead and remove those bolts so we can lay the seat back while keeping it connected with the, uh, the airbag harness and we can start mocking up our mount. Okay, so we got this just lifted up. Now we haven't disconnected any harnesses here because first and foremost, the negative is still on the battery. We don't want to trip any airbag light or do any damage to the electrical system. So before we start diving into everything, we need to make sure we do that. But this allows us, at least for now, to kind of mock up a space that our amp will mount kind of on this perch above our factory vent. And uh, then we can run all our cabling up to the factory radio for our signal and speaker output. Okay, so here on the bench, some of the parts that we need to get this install completed. First and foremost, we're doing an Alpine five channel amplifier. This is gonna power all our door speakers as well as a sub. Now to properly provide this thing power, we have an oxygen free uh, four gauge wiring um, amplifier kit by NVX. It's the XKIT42. Now to safely tap into the factory system, we're actually using a DSP-T harness. We're not using the DSP side, but we're using the AX DSP-TY3 by access. What this is gonna do is allow us, and we'll show you how this is gonna be done, but allow us to tap into the factory radio without cutting any of the harnesses. Now to provide the right type of signal for our amplifier, once we pull the signal out of the radio through our T-harness, we're going to run it through an LC2i. Now you can get the four or six channel versions as well. We just have the two channel version, which will be just fine in this application. Now this LC2i, not only does it provide a line out converter signal, but it also has AccuBase. So in case we experience any base roll off in the factory system, we can correct that with this line out converter. And then finally here, we have some speaker wire. We're going to be using some speed wire. The speed wire will carry the signal from our factory radio to our line out converter. And then after we've amplified our signal um, out of our amplifier itself, we're gonna run that signal again back through nine wire up to our radio to all the door speakers. Let's go ahead and start mocking up where we're gonna get our amplifier situated underneath the seat. All right, so at this time, we got our amplifier pulled out of the box. We started mocking it up because we're putting it up under the seat. We got some ABS plastic um, to really kind of fit that area up underneath the seat. It's gonna snag the front bolt on the left side facing forward of the seat and the rear bolt of the left side of the passenger seat. And then this end kind of digs into the carpet, but everything's bolted to this ABS plastic here um, as one piece. And I just spend a lot of time trying to fit everything but uh, based on the size of our amplifier, I also wanted to put the LC2i up under the seat. It's all super, super tight, um, but I think it's gonna work just fine. So we'll have um, our LC2i, basically the signal from the radio, is gonna go to our LC2i, and it'll provide an output that'll go to the inputs on the back of the amplifier. So RC out from this, to the RC input on the amplifier. And then when we have our signal amplified, out of the amplifier, we're gonna send it back up to the radio into the harness back behind the car. 
Now this will all be super easy and possible with the help of our T-harness. So since we've kind of gotten this all mocked up and ready to go, we're going to put this off to the side and actually start the wiring side of the amplifier. All right, so we have the uh, wiring kit for our amplifier here. In this kit, as we get this open, it comes with a fuse holder, four gauge OFC power wire, RCA cables, remote turn on wire, miscellaneous connections, a ton of really nice speaker wire, also OFC, as well as ground, ground cable. First thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this from under the hood in the engine bay from the battery through that inline fuse over here, and then we're gonna run it into the car. And being that this is the place that we need to connect into, we started getting our power wire running. Right down here is our fuse holder, and we have a little bit of leftover ABS plastic that we created and built a fuse holder for there. And we'll put the cover over it, but we zip tied it to that mount as well, in addition to screwing it down to that platform. So that'll sit down there out of the way. And then we're going to run our wire and we're going to mount it to the back of the firewall here. Go up and over the engine bay. And then right down here, up underneath, you see there is our main grommet. And then that little protrusion there, that nipple, you can cut off so we can run our wire into the uh, cabin of the, the RAV4. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that off so we have a space to push our wire through. Okay, so what we've done here is we got just a hanger and we went ahead and cut one of those nipples off there and got our hanger to help fish it through. And we're gonna lube up that, uh, that nipple there just so it slides through pretty easily. But we're gonna pull our power wire through that nipple. We already felt it on the other side. So we pulled the panels off where that comes through. So we can pull that into the car and that'll be nice because it'll seal up and around the wire pretty well. So that's where it comes out, is right up there. You can feel your, your hand by the harness. And that's what we're gonna use to uh, pull that wire through is this wire. So our wire came in up there. You can pull the carpet back to fill where the grommet comes in. As we pulled it through, here's our wire. And like I said, you'll need to really lube it up. We use soap and water, which worked really well. It doesn't damage anything. And now this wire is inside the cabin. So we're gonna run it along this factory loom up underneath the kick panel. And then at some point we do need to pull the carpet up so we can go up underneath to about this area by where the vent comes out because that's where amp's gonna sit right on this perch. Okay, so we got our wire all zip tied and tucked all the way down there. And we came out kind of right by this flat by the vent here. Now for our ground, um, we've been looking for a good factory ground, usually on uh, Toyotas and 4Runners and you know similar body styles that they have a ground on this crossbeam up underneath the seat, but there isn't one on this one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our own ground and tap our own ground here. This is a nice solid piece and we've confirmed there's no wiring up underneath it. So we're gonna actually clean that off with a wire brush. We'll hook that onto a drill and then we will drill and tap a spot where we can ground right here on this uh, frame rail. So we're gonna get that done and then also run that ground wire out that spot as well. Okay, good to go. So we drilled and tapped that 10 millimeter in there, cleaned the paint off really good, fit the wire up underneath the carpet, so it'll sit up underneath there. Now we do need to get the radio out, and it's pretty safe. So we're gonna pop the panel behind it off. There's four 10 millimeter and two clips that hold the radio in, pops right on out. And uh, then we can run all our cable down over here, and then out the same area as well. Okay, so let's talk about this T-harness. now. Because we're retaining the factory radio, we don't want to compromise or cut into the harness that connects to that radio. So what we're going to do is utilize this T-harness, or most of this. Uh, this is meant for something else. This is meant for Axis's DSP unit, but we're not doing a DSP here. And so a lot of this we don't need and we can cut out, but there is a portion that we do need to make this such an easy install. 
So this part of the harness from this end to this end, this end plugs in to the back of the radio where the current speaker harness output connects into. We disconnect that out of the radio, plug this in its place, and this basically will take the speaker output from the factory radio, and then this end will plug into the original harness that we unplugged, the, the, the factory plug. And basically, this gives us a route here that we can take signal from this end, route it to our amplifier, bring it back up, and send it back out from this end to all our speakers. The nice thing about doing this down the road, if you have to remove it or revert back to stock, it's super easy because this all just unplugs and you can take it with you. So like I said, there's a lot of this we don't need. Like this plug here is to the DSP. So we're actually gonna pull the tape off, cut this all out. Now we'll actually probably keep this one and tap into the red wire here as our accessory or ignition just so we can tap into that accessory to trigger the amp to turn on when the key turns on or when the radio turns on. So that's kind of our goal here. So let's go ahead and cut out the parts we don't need and start prepping the parts we do. Okay, so I've removed the tape just to make this a lot easier to visualize here. Now, this is the speaker plug that'll plug into the back of the radio to take the signal to the amplifier. Now, we it does tee off here because it has to send signal originally to the DSP we're not using. So we're gonna cut this out, just like that. Put that off to the side. Now we're left with this. Now of course we don't need this to T anymore. All right, so I've cut out this harness. So basically we're left with this guy and we will uh, put some new heat shrink up and over these where it used to tee off those connections. So this end will take our signal from the radio and we're gonna send this down to our LC2i and then that signal coming out of the amplifier will come back in our speed wire. And this does have a little connection in it. I don't know if we'll keep that or not, but this will go back up into the um, main harness, which will take the signal to the doors, just like that. So this is really what we wanted out of that DSP harness. So we can use this, modify this, instead of actually cutting into the factory harness itself. Put these ready to go. Now we have our speed wire, which we showed you before. And when you pulled back the shielding on the speed wire, what you're left with is the same coloring speakers, speaker wire, which is really cool. So what we're gonna do is on our signal side, which will take signal down to the amplifier, we're gonna connect color for color by soldering it and heat shrinking everything up. Then we're gonna ramp it with some Tessa tape just so it's all nice and protected. For our amplifier output side, it'll go back up to the harness. We'll do the same thing with another length of nine wire. Now we'll write with a Sharpie just so we don't get these backwards because they look the same. Which side is signal input to the amp and which side is speaker output to our speakers. Now quite a bit of length here. Uh, we did two about 10 foot lengths. So we're gonna strip both ends and start soldering it up. Now you'll notice that we have our amplifier turn on which is this guy and we don't have that here. So I'm gonna see if I can get this T harness side for accessory working. Um, see if that's still an option. Okay, so we stripped both ends here for our signal harness, and we're gonna go ahead and start matching up color for color and soldering it up. So, we got all our harness colors matched for our signal side. Now, we'll go ahead and move our heat shrink up and over these connections, and then we'll use a heat gun and shrink down these tubes. Then we'll wrap it in Tessa tape, and then from the radio, the signal side is done. And then we'll do the same thing with our output harness from our amp to bring it back up to the car harness. Okay, so our output harness from the amplifier, same thing, got everything all soldered up. Heat shrink is all shrunk down. And uh, we're gonna wrap this also in Tesla tape just so it's nice and protected. And our output harness is done. Okay, so that portion of the harness that we didn't use what I actually ended up doing is cutting out this entirely. We just didn't need this. This is nothing that we'll need no longer. We'll just toss it in the trash. Um, but this part, I pulled out the red, the black, and the yellow out of this T-harness part. And I'm gonna extend these wires and these will power our LC2i. This will provide constant 
ground an accessory to our LC2Y and so I also have about 10 foot of matching color wire now if you don't have matching color wire no big deal just make sure you don't get wires mixed up I soldered onto those and again we're gonna pull our heat shrink up and over those and shrink those down and fortunately this harness had everything we need to power our LC2Y so we will um, wrap this as well this will run all the way down um, to the line out converter along with our 9 wire for speaker input and 9 wire for speaker output. Okay, so I've got my three sets of harnesses good to go. Remember our power harness, that'll go to our line out converter that has power ground and accessory that we extended with the uh, red, yellow, and black wire. And then we have our signal harness, which is the male plug that'll plug into the back of the radio and our female harness which will plug into the factory harness, taking the signal from the amplifier to the door. So that's all done. And we zip tied all three of those all the way down, giving us quite a bit of length here. So we haven't really cut and terminated those ends with our connectors yet till we fit and size this harness in the car. Um, but uh, yeah, you can see there's our little custom harness right down there for our uh, LC2i to power that thing up, but other than that, it's turned out pretty good so far. Process to get the radio out is pretty straightforward. We have a panel tool here just to make things a little bit easier, but really all you need to do, there's this panel up back behind the radio, and using that panel tool, you just kind of start getting up underneath. And the reason why we use a panel tool is because it doesn't scratch like a screwdriver would or a, or a putty knife. Next we have a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter socket. There's two bolts on each side from the radio in. Carefully pull those out. Don't drop them in the dash. What we need to do is give this a little tug. Just like that because there's two clips on the bottom. Then the radio is out. Now, fortunately, because we built this awesome T harness, we don't have to disconnect much. All we need to do is disconnect the, the wiring harness for the speaker, which is black, and then the main, the main harness here, um, and then we plug our harnesses into their place, and then the, the harnesses that we unplugged will plug into our own T harness. Let's uh, go grab our T harness and start fishing that through the dash. Now up to this point in the install, we actually haven't disconnected or unplugged anything, but now we're about to behind the radio. And just for the protection of the vehicle, it's a really good idea to go ahead and remove the negative off the battery, which we're gonna go ahead and do so. We're gonna pull this negative off just so we don't cause any shorts um, as we uh, install our own equipment. So let's go ahead and get that pulled apart. There we are. All right, so we started fishing our harnesses through. We haven't plugged anything in yet, but right down between the two vents, there seems to be a passageway that works well, and it comes out right there. And then we came down to this point, and then from here, we're gonna go up underneath the carpet and out kind of this same vent area as well. Um, we used the hanger to kind of help fish that through. It took us a while to make sure we ran it in the appropriate spot. Now, with our harnesses here, see, this is the black one and this is our speaker harnesses. So what we'll do is push in that tab, like so. And then our signal harness that we built, we'll plug right in its place, like that. And we'll clip it in. And then the harness that we disconnected for our speakers, because this, this is your speaker output. This runs to all your speakers in the car. So this is where our amplified signal from our amplifier needs to go into. And this is what this harness will be that we made. So same thing, this will plug into that harness. Okay, so we plugged in our speaker output harness and our signal harness in. Remember those go down to the amp. So with that all plugged in, now we can worry about our secondary harness that supplies constant power, ground and accessory to our LC2i. Now, it looks like that may be the plug, but it isn't. It's actually this plug here. I guess on ours, it's a little bit more gray. But that's when you pull out, 
This is the one you'll plug in its place, and then this harness will plug into ours. Okay, so with our harness is now connected, everything plugged in here. That's about it. I mean, we won't totally button up the radio until we test everything, but now we can put the radio back in and just let it rest in its natural position and continue running our cables to the amplifier. Okay, so we got our amp board in and ran our signal, our speaker output, and our power ground and uh, accessory out just right underneath the vent, underneath the carpet. And now we're back behind. This allows us to have access to all our speaker terminals, which we can unplug and wire up. We need to hook our RCAs into the output of our LC2i and do our signal input from the radio, as well as our power, ground, and accessory. And just start buttoning everything up back here. Now we can finally cut all our cables to length. Because now with test fitting and getting the seat in, it all fits. We can get our back bolt in, which is perfect. And then I've put pre-drilled some holes here just so we can anchor down some zip ties if needed. All right, so I cut out a lot of the, just the boring wire connecting parts, but we're gonna go over everything that we have connected up underneath the seat. Got the seat now remounted, rolled all the way forward, bolts are back in just to hold it in place. So we get our power and ground into our power and ground of the amplifier. Now our speaker outputs, remember, channel one, two, three, four. That goes up to our speaker output harness that we built going up to behind the radio that plugs into the output, going to all the doors. We hook that up, all four channels. Each channel has two wires, so we connected that in. Cool thing is, it's all color coded, so left front is white, right front is gray, left rear is green, and right rear is purple. Now each one of those wires has a black stripe, and that black stripe is a negative, so each one of those pairs has a negative. So we got that all hooked up here. Now our remote turn on wire for the amplifier goes down to our LC2i. LC2i has a remote out, the very far pin here to the left, that blue one there. So we got that hooked up. So that is the amplifier side. We have to get a, just a shorter pair of RCAs. These are still a little bit too long. We need about a foot and a half. These are about three feet. So, but now our signal side Signal side is this other side. Remember, it has input on it. So this is from the radio itself, providing signal to our LC2i. Now, since our LC2i is a two channel, we actually won't use the back channels of signal, which is fine. It'll just get summed inside the LC2i. So we'll cap those off here. Um, but we did it into the inputs there, just the front left and the front right. Obviously the RC output on the other side of the LC2i, this is the main, it comes out and goes into channel one and two. Got everything all zip tied nice and clean. Now for our subwire, we haven't shown that quite yet. So our subwire, it's a 16 gauge OFC wire. We went up underneath, just up underneath the carpet. And we actually came out right there and we're running it down here. That's for the sub. And then we've come out here so far. Um, we have to decide where we're gonna put the box in the trunk area, whether it's gonna be on the driver or passenger side, but we leave, left ourselves plenty of cable to make that decision easily or even move it around if we wanted. So now up underneath the hood, when that wire went through the firewall there, we actually zip tied it up to these little supports here. So it's up and out of the way through our inline fuse, which we have mounted to a piece of ABS plastic there. And then we actually drilled just a, a big enough hole that our power wire can go through it and we can still get the cap on. And the cap on is a nice, Nice and secure. It's a 12 millimeter bolt that we removed. So while the negative was off the battery, we got this all hooked up. And then once the amp was all hooked up, ready to go, put the negative back on, tighten that down. So up underneath the hood, we are done and good to go. Okay, so we started putting panels back on, get everything cleaned up. We need to do a vacuum. We need to button up the radio by getting it clipped back into place in the four 10 millimeters back in. All put back together here. We saw what the amp looked like up underneath, it's all tucked away, and it actually does not touch the seat. It's awesome, it's a perfect fit. Whereas the LC2i, all tucked next to it. All turned out really, really clean. All mounted underneath it. Everything zip tied, tucked away. And with the seat back, you won't even see it. You can't kick it with your feet. It's a perfect positioning. <laughs> Okay, so we got the 
Radio all back in, seat back in, all panels done. Everything has been tuned and tested. We set our gains with the SMD DD1. So we got the sub in the back. If you want to see the sub that we're using or the speakers, we'll have links in the description for door speaker installs as well as the sub unboxing and mounting. Um, that's about it for this install. If you have any questions, go ahead and post a comment below. Thanks guys for watching. Hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you in the next video.